Welcome to Age Potential TV. I'm Lori Campbell, your host, gerontologist, and advocate of your best life, here to introduce you to an emerging trend called Age Potential. Here's to living out your age potential. Pew Research reports that one in five American women ends her childbearing years without offspring and barely half of U.S. adults are married, a record low. Social and demographic trends are changing. How does that affect the quality of our aging experience and our ability to thrive? Robin Gray will share her perspective. Welcome, Robin. Thank you very much for having me here today, Lori. As you know, you are among a growing demographic in our society, being single and childless. Share your perspective of, of life and how that has changed over the years. Well, growing up in the 60s and 70s, I think like a lot of young women during that time, I defined uh, success and happiness as getting married and having children. But as I got older and that didn't happen for me, and I still wanted to be fulfilled and happy, I had to change my definition of how I, would, how I would have a happy and successful life. And it was easy for me to do because I'm a person that has a positive outlook and I just thought of it as those are just types of relationships. And even if I don't have those relationships, I can have other relationships and other connections and lots of experiences in life despite the fact that I'm not married and I don't have children. And that's how I've chosen to live my life and it's worked out well for me. What do you find most fulfilling about being single? I think the most fulfilling thing for me is, is the independence that I enjoy. Um, I've, I've obviously become accustomed to it and so I don't know anything different. But when I hear other people lament about what they, what they maybe envy about my life, it's that sense of independence. You know, the choices that I make are all mine. And um, so where I live, where I want to travel, what I want to do, hobbies that I pursue, even friends that I have, those are all personal choices and I have the, the most amount of independence in order to exercise whatever choices I choose to make in, in my entire life. And um, again, I just enjoy that immensely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was there a time in your life where you felt other, otherwise than how you feel about it now? Um, I think that when I was, again, in that stage of, um, again, learning how to live a fulfilling life despite the fact that marriage and children was not probably going to happen for me, I had to really think about what were the benefits and how was, how was I going to maximize my potential based on my situation. And uh, certainly because my expectations were for so long that I probably would be married and have children, um, there was an adjustment period, there's no doubt about that. And, and some lamenting going on, um, but it, it, I, I'm not a person to feel sorry for myself, so it really, it didn't last for a long time, but there was an adjustment period, certainly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where, I, where I mourned some of what I was missing or what I perceived to be missing, uh, but then I turned it into an opportunity, mm -hmm. um, and, and I've just continued to live that way, and now, of course, it's been, that's my life, and I don't know any other life, so it's really hard to lament something that you haven't experienced before. Sure, sure. So I would love for you to respond to this quote by a social psychologist named Bella DiPaolo. She has a book out called Singled Out, and I quote, I do wish people would understand that a lot of singles want to be single. Do you agree with that? Well, I certainly um, say it's evolved for me uh, at this point in my life. Um, I really enjoy being single, and I've been that way. I've felt that way for you know a long time now. But I know that there are some people that maybe are single that aren't happy with their life, and they might think that the reason why they're unhappy is because they are single. I think it's really important to understand what drives your happiness, and just don't let anything get in the way of making that happen for yourself. Um, and if it's an obstacle, then you need to figure out, again, a work plan and how to, how to reach your goals. But for me, I, d I didn't really look at myself as losing anything. I think of it as I have opportunities that other people don't have. Everybody has choices. I've made some different choices, and there's pros and cons. But again, I don't, I don't lament or mourn that. I, I just try to live life to the fullest. Mm, that's beautiful, Robin. Beautiful. Well, in your opinion, what do you think of the greatest mis uh, misunderstanding people have of people who are single? Or maybe there isn't any. Have you incurred anything? 
You know, I certainly do at times, and they don't necessarily say uh, indicate that they feel that about me, but in general, if they try to picture themselves single, they would say, wow, that must be really lonely. And I think that there's certainly lots of people in um, marriages or other have other significant um, uh, relationships that are very lonely in their relationships. So I think that to say that single people must be lonely is kind of a strange statement because again, I, I, I think like I think there's lots of people that are lonely, whether they're single or, or in relationships. Um, the other one is, wow, you must have a lot of free time. And you know, we all have 24 hours in the day, and we all choose how we want to spend those 24 hours. And so certainly when people are married and have children, they have some obligations that maybe take up some time that I, I don't have those obligations. But at the same time, those, those were choices they made, and I make other choices. It doesn't mean I have any more free time. I might have, um, again, I have 24 hours, and we all do, and we make choices on how we spend it. And, and, and I'm, I'm busier than a lot of people I know because I fill my life with things that make me happy. And so, um, again, those, those are misunderstandings or, or something that it, I don't, it's not a reality for me anyway. I'm not lonely, and I don't have any more free time than anybody else does. Right, right. Well, it, it's interesting as as we you know grow older and, and age, we often think of where are we going to, where do we want to retire or grow old? You know, people think of retirement places or um, aging in place. Give, let me hear your perspective on this study. Nearly 50% of women aged 45 to 59, polled by AARP, regard living with girlfriends to be an appealing lifestyle. Think the Golden Girls kind of like living all together. Uh, what do you think about that, and would that be an option for you? You know, I think for a lot of people that would be a very um, appealing option. I mean, for some people it's, it's born out of economic necessity as well, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, but for people who did um, grow up most of their life living with others in their household, they might think of living alone as, again, being a lonely experience. Um, but for me personally, I have lived alone since my early 20s. And um, as much as I consider myself an extrovert, and I really enjoy people, I really need downtime too. So having my own living space that is private, that I can have my downtime is very important to me. So I don't, I don't anticipate that that's a situation that, that would be attractive to me, but um, never say never. I mean, my life could change and my attitudes could change, but at this point, I really do like my own space, but I, I still like to connect with people frequently. So mm -hmm. I would continue to be an extrovert, but still maintain my personal living space that's mine for my private time. Sure. So we all possess qualities to thrive, live out our age potential. We just need to develop them. And marriage and children are wonderful, but in and of themselves, they really don't guarantee our fulfillment, our happiness, or for that matter, health. So Robin, how have you developed, or what qualities have you developed within yourself that, that you believe have contributed to your happiness, to your fulfillment, and have sustained your health and independence thus far? Sure. Well, Lori, I think it's just um, a matter of being very positive about what life has to offer. Again, there are so many choices, and there are so many ways you connect with people. Um, on, on the situation of children, you know, as much as I love children, the fact that I didn't have the opportunity to have them myself, or I, I chose not to. I guess that would have been a choice I could have made. I mm -hmm. could have had children sure. outside of marriage. Sure. And I realized that as much as I love children, I didn't want to, at least from the get-go, be a single parent. It's hard enough for two people to raise children. So I consciously decided that I was just going to be a dang good aunt. And so I'm very closest to my niece, nieces and nephews. Um, likewise, children in my neighborhood. I'm very, I'm very close to them, and they consider me to be a friend of theirs. And so that's how I get my child fix. Um, but otherwise, again, it's pursuit of happiness. And if you only define pursuit of happiness in marriage and children, and that doesn't happen for you, you could be an unhappy person. So I think people just need to dig deep and understand themselves well to know what gives them joy, what gives them happiness, what gives them the sense of connection that they need, and then pursue that. And that's what I've done, and I feel fulfilled through, for, through following through in that practice in my daily living. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beautiful. So what wisdom can you share with the viewers who are choosing to remain single or are single due to some unforeseen circumstance in their life? Sure. Well, certainly for people who 
um, have not been or most recently single, I think that they need to reach out to to others. I mean, there's lots of single women out there again that have been single their entire life or have through unfor unfortunate or unforeseen circumstances become single. And I think that um, those people must be willing to share. I know I would be in terms of resources. I think there's, and also I'm a lifelong learner. And so if people view themselves as a lifelong learner mm -hmm. and they have in fact relied on a spouse for some information, it's never too late to learn. And then again, that whole idea of make, mean, reaching out to people and making connections because there's lots of people who are looking for meaningful relationships and you don't have to define what that is. And again, if you're, if you're thinking marriage is the only way, um, you're, you might not find that. And so you need to really be open to other types of friendships and relationships to fulfill that need. Robin, you shared so much what I find in my research that really brings about thriving. So it really doesn't have to do with circumstances. And it, it really starts within so many of the things that you highlighted. Thank you for sharing your perspective, which is really a representative of a growing demographic in our, in our country. So thank you. Thank you. I think an ex excerpt from my book, Awaken Your Age Potential, written by Salvador Velveditos, is a most fitting way to sum up this segment. And I quote, I'm 87 years young and don't feel old at all. Although at age 50, I thought people in their 80s were old. I really didn't understand what it meant to live on the other side of 50. I can tell you there's a lot of hope, joy, and fulfillment ahead, but you must choose life over the loss and disappointments. Chances are people who dread growing older are probably not very satisfied or fulfilled in the present moment. I have learned to live a fulfilling life out of choice, not out of my circumstances." End quote. Whether you are single, married, divorced, widowed, or childless. The good news is you can choose to thrive.